Welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. This season is all about comfort. With many French comfort recipes made in my own home kitchen, inspired by what I find in my garden, and kept company by my two furry companions, Join me as I share seasonal fare to elevate the everyday meal. And most importantly, discover how to enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and this is the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. Today we're going to be making spaghetti a la carbonara. And spaghetti a la carbonara is one of my comfort foods that I, well, I've turned to many times over the years. So the history goes with spaghetti a la carbonara. Well, nobody really knows, to be honest. <laughs> First of all, a la carbonara means in the style of a coal miner. And so when we look at it that way, then maybe the coal miners in it, uh, Italy used or made this recipe. But it also might just be a reflection of the, the pepper flakes, because you're putting a lot of fresh pepper um, grindings into this recipe that look like coal. So we don't really know for sure, but we do know that the modern version that includes eggs, cheese, lard or cured bacon, um, and spaghetti noodles, over there did begin in the mid um, 20th century, about the time of World War II. There are a couple different stories with regards to this. It could be that those in Rome, um, when they were fleeing the oppressors, went to the region of Lazio, which is known for cooking um, with eggs and lard and cheese, and they brought that back home with them when they returned to Rome. There's also, the story goes, that um, allied forces um, when they had to eat meals, they had powdered eggs and then they had bacon and they had noodles because they were in Italy. And then they um, started that interest when they turned it into something a little bit more delectable. We really don't know for sure, but we do know it's very good. So we're gonna make spaghetti alla carbonara. I'm gonna walk you through my recipe. It's fairly simple. It is definitely adapted to what I enjoy, and I'll share with you some options as we go through it. So let's get started. I've got the water boiling on the stove, and what I'm gonna do first is get the bacon rendering, and I'm using pancetta, and we'll get that rendering on the stove, and we're gonna have a meal in about 15 minutes. Let's get started. There's nothing quite like coming home after having been on vacation or holiday or at work, um, whether it's just the day of work or a, a work trip, and knowing you're going to be able to have a meal that you love ready to eat in 15 minutes. Um, spaghetti alla carbonara is that dish for me. It's been something I've enjoyed since I was a kid. It's been adapted and changed over the years, but if there's one dish that's been made most frequently in my kitchen, it is spaghetti alla carbonara. <laughs> and, and it's a comfort. It's, it's definitely something that makes you feel good and makes me feel good. And bacon, eggs, and cheese, it's hard to go wrong with that. Um, and so when I come home from travel, one of my rituals is to make sure that I have in my fridge the ingredients necessary for this particular dish uh, most frequently. Um, now since it's just bacon, eggs, and, and cheese, you can have most of those things in your fridge before you leave if you're just going to be gone for a couple days or even a week and um, you'll be set. Um, if it'll be longer, um, whoever's taking care of your dogs or your house in my case, um, I just asked and left some extra money. I said, could you pick up some eggs? Um, I would really appreciate it. So that when I come home, um, your time clock's usually off. You've been carrying luggage. Um, no matter whether it was good or not so good, 
um, this is going to be a good meal and it's going to nourish you and comfort you and give you that hug when you come home. Um, so yeah, uh, today we're going to make spaghetti alla carbonara. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so the water's boiling. And, or it's nearly about to boil. And as soon as you start the water boiling, you want to start rendering the pancetta or the bacon or the pure, uh, the cured um, ham. So we're going to get this going. And then put this at about medium heat. You don't want to render them too fast because um, you don't want them to burn, you want them to be crispy. Um, but you're just going to put a little bit of olive oil. And I have about three ounces of chopped, thickly diced pancetta. Um, the traditional recipe um, from Italy calls for cured salami, um, but choose bacon that has fat on it. So whatever you choose, just make sure it has fat on it because that's going to give this dish all of the flavor that makes it so good. So you can already hear that sizzling. I love that you, we render this at the same time because it basically acts as a timer for each other. So that's lovely and sizzling. Okay. Right. We got there. That'll come to a boil. Now, often when I make this recipe, I want to have vegetables because this is a comfort meal. You got cheese, you got eggs, you got, well, bacon. Ah, oh, so good. But I also want to have some vegetables. So I'll often with this dish, roast some vegetables. It takes exactly the amount of time that it takes to make this dish. So what I often will do is chop up uh, my, bro my broccoli, which I love. I think this is my favorite vegetable. Have this in my house year round. And I'll chop it up, olive oil, salt and pepper, 375 degrees, 20 minutes, and it's done when this is all ready to eat as well. So if you're looking for a little balance, that's what I suggest, that's highly, uh, that's what I love to do. All right, so speaking of the pasta dish, now our pasta ready, I'm gonna put this over here for now. We want to mix up the sauce. So, All the sauce is are three eggs, about a cup of either pecor pecorino or parmigiano reggiano. Uh, the traditional dish does call for pecorino. I typically always just have parmigiano reggiano in my refrigerator, so I'm going for what is typically in my kitchen. This is again a comfort meal. You are doing something that's easy, that is going to be something you don't have to think about. Um, so some people do both. They do a little bit of pecorino, a little bit of parmesan, but I'm just going to do parmesan. So first things first, let's put those eggs in. I'm going to put those in the dish that we're baking with it, get them out of the way. Three eggs. Now some recipes call for just egg yolks to make them extra creamy or a certain amount of eggs and then egg yolks. Um, it's really up to you. Again, I'm keeping this really simple for what I use. And um, that's all I use, is three eggs, uh, a generous amount of freshly ground pepper. Woo! <laughs> and I do mean generous. All right, so once the eggs and the black pepper are in here, we're just gonna whisk it up. This serves two people. For me, it serves a dinner and a lunch or breakfast the next day. <laughs> Now, I grate a cup of Parmigiana Reggiana. While I'm doing that, it looks like the water is boiling, so I'm going to add some spaghetti. Now, with spaghetti, this is traditional. Now, sometimes what I will have in the pantry, and actually I tend to do this, is the whole wheat spaghetti. It's a little narrower, and what I like about that is less heavy. Um, so it really depends on what you want to do and what you have in your pantry. You can, the original recipe is said to be a, been made with penne pasta, so it wasn't originally made supposedly with spaghetti. Use whatever pasta you have in your pantry. Um, the flavors are all going to be there. As we know, this is, you know, this is a comfort food recipe, not a French recipe, but pasta is there to be a vehicle to soak up the sauce. So whatever pasta you want, you think is going to soak up the sauce best, use it. I use spaghetti, but it doesn't have to be what you use. I'm going to 
turn this down. It's cooking pretty nice and quick. Wonderful. All right, so we're getting close. So again, a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. Put that right in the sauce. Okay. And just let it go. So that's ready to go. What I love about that is it's a very simple sauce, but that is the sauce and it makes it so creamy and yummy. So we'll keep that handy. I always save a little bit left over to sprinkle on top right before I serve it. Now, the pancetta is rendering. It's giving you the fat. It's gonna give you the crispiness, but you do want it to be cooked entirely. So just make sure it's all about one layer and just leave it alone. Stir it every once in a while to turn the sides, but you're pretty well set. Pasta's getting close and it really is Sit back and pour yourself a glass of wine. Sit back and have some water. I don't know about you, but when I come home from travel, I'm usually pretty parched, so I get some more water in me. And we're about ready to have a good meal. Now, one other layer of flavor that I like to add, and um, gotten, again, this recipe is a compilation of a lot of recipes that I've tried over the years, and I've kept what I've loved and tossed what I didn't. Um, and we started, when I was a kid, making this recipe with cream and people, there is there are recipes out there with cream, but that is, I guess, sacrilege. So don't use cream. <laughs> and uh, all you need is eggs, uh, pepper, and cheese for your sauce. But there is an element of flavor that I'd like to add, and it is to add one clove of chopped garlic. You're gonna add this to the bacon right before the bacon is done. So I can make this, or chop this up, is getting crispy. Nice rough chop. Let's get it nice and ready to go. Getting close. All right, so the pasta's done. We don't want the pasta to get too limp. We want a little bit of al dente to it. So that's perfect. Look at that. It has a little bit of give to it. It's not too tender because it's going to go into the sauce. Mm. And it's going to get a little bit softer in the sauce. So this is perfect. I'm gonna drain this while I'm waiting for the bacon to continue to cook. And we're about ready to put it all together. Okay, so now's the perfect time to add the garlic. Again, one clove of chopped garlic. You can hear that sizzle. Just adds a nice extra layer of flavor. If you don't like garlic, you can leave it out again adapt and make as fits you and you only need to leave the garlic in there for about a minute for it to not even brown but you just want it to cook through enough that it renders its flavor it'll stay in there and keep hanging out of that lovely renderings of the bacon now if the bacon or pancetta that you're using renders a lot of fat you want to drain um, drain it so you only have about one or two tablespoons of fat. So make sure, depending on what kind of bacon you're using, you just render that. And you do that right before um, you put the garlic in. So the bacon is turned off. Now what we're gonna do is take the pasta, everything's turned off here. Pasta's off, bacon's off, and you're just gonna put it right into the sauce. The reason you turn it off, or not the sauce, the bacon. The reason you turn it off is in a second, when you add the eggs and the whole thing to sauce, you don't want the eggs to get cooked too much. In fact, yes, they are gonna get a little bit cooked because there's heat going on here, but you don't want to have too much heat too quickly. Now, sauce. And you do this pretty quickly, so don't um, dawdle here because you do want some residual heat coming in to this recipe. So that it, there it is. <laughs> that it cooks together. Sometimes, if the dish has gotten too cold, you can turn the oven back on or the stove top back on to cook through the eggs. Just toss it, there, it's starting to cook just enough. That's what we want, it's looking good. So if the sauce you want a little bit thicker, you can take some of that pasta water, take about a third of a cup, you could add it and that actually because you have so much starch in that water will thicken the sauce up 
but I like it just the way it is. I didn't add that much water. And that is all you need to do for spaghetti alla carbonara. Let's dish it up. Ooh, yum. <laughs> it's so good. All right, so let's dish up. Get enough bacon and pasta. Oh, <laughs> look at all that gooey sauce. It just always amazes me that that sauce is simply three things. Um, and then again, if you want the, gotta put a little pasta or a little cheese on top. There we go. This. Get a little pasta, get a little bacon. Yum. And I love to eat it when it's warm. It's good cold too, but warm is oof, so good. Mm. Mm. You have the fat of the bacon and the saltiness of the bacon. That is crucial. Get that salt from, that pet, from the cheese and the bacon. And then it's just creamy and then you have the al dente pasta. It's just a simply wonderful comfort food. So next time you come home for a trip, come home from a long day, and you do want to get in the kitchen, but you don't want to spend too much time in the kitchen, this is a great meal to comfort you. May you enjoy your day, enjoy your food, and enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Bon bon bon. everyday luxury is having my cookbooks right next to me in the kitchen and this is something that I have been wanting to do for 15 or 20 years uh, when I went on a tour um, at a home tour uh, a long time ago in Walla Walla I remember walking into this one kitchen and she had all of her cookbooks she had them up on um, uh, vintage ladders and some shelves but it was all really accessible and it was only cookbooks and I thought that is a great idea. I mean, it makes sense, but I've never thought of it before. So my shelf of books has become where I put my travels with food pictures as well. So you have some pictures of when I had the opportunity to go to France and cook with some individuals that I'm still can't believe I had the opportunity to do so. Patricia Wells, um, Susan Herman Loomis. Um, and it just is a reminder of what I love about cooking, where my inspiration comes from, but then I have those cookbooks that I pull from on any given night to try something new or to go to a favorite. Um, I even have my trug here as I can go right out into the garden and trim um, my herbs for my kitchen or grab some berries or whatever it is that I'm using for a recipe. Um, so this was fun. I just added this to the, to the house. These shelves were new, um, but this was here and this was here. And I thought, well, why not use it for a bookshelf? Um, but yeah, so a simple everyday luxury. And even if it's just makeshift, so get a ladder and stack books. Um, if you have just an, on, a, on, a, on the part of your kitchen, that's what I used to do in my previous home. I just had some extra space on my counter and I put my books right here with some bookends on the counter so they were very easily accessible. So um, something to try. Uh, <laughs> an everyday luxury, having your own kitchen cookbook library.